about you guys. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty years. It's unclear how long it's been since drivers in Denver have come face to face with striking workers. These guys work hard every day. We pay a lot of money to this store, and they need to get a livable wage. That's why they've been subjected to COVID. They've gotten sick. They've died, and it's like this store needs to pony up and pay these folks. That's why. The CEO made twenty-two million dollars last year, and we got about nothing. So. It's it's time. You need to share. We got you through all that stuff. It's time. Is it a revolution? Sure, we'll call it that. I like that. I like the way you think. After two weeks, the 8,000 strikers managed to get better health coverage, as well as a $2 raise on wages that average $15 an hour. The local dispute involving the King Super supermarkets is one of the many strikes breaking out all over the country over the past few months. Studying them is James Walsh a professor of political science who specializes in social movements. I teach the history of the labor movement, and for me, this is a chance to see it in action. This is a chance to see workers doing what workers have always done, which is fight for dignified wage and, and respect. A lot of it is, re is related to the pandemic, but a lot of it is a new consciousness that's come because we have the greatest disparity of wealth in the United States in our history. More than any other time, we have this ultra-rich 1%, and then we have um, folks who are struggling just to pay bills and to make a living wage. The disparity of wealth is like um, a bubble that's finally burst. From Denver, the capital of Colorado, all it takes is a drive 200 miles west into the Rockies to reach one of the spots in the U.S. where these inequalities are among the starkest. Welcome to the legendary resort of Aspen, a resort for billionaires. For over 75 years, Aspen has been a skiing paradise that costs $200 for a one-day ski pass. I'm the Vice President of Communications for Aspen Skiing Company, and we're here at the beautiful top of Aspen Mountain, Colorado. We are a privately owned company. We're owned by a, a family from Chicago, the Crown family. Um, they are passionate skiers, passionate conservationists, passionate philanthropists, and we're really fortunate to have them as our owners because they love the sport of skiing. The staff is amazing. Uh, the service levels are incredible. The food is delicious. Um, so, so those kind of things allow us to operate um, in, a, in a way that's a little different than a lot of North American ski areas. Not unlike most resorts the world over, the seasonal workers operating the ski lifts are young mountain lovers from all over the country. Hailing from Florida, David, 25, opens the lifts at 9.30 a.m. My name is David Richardson, and I have been working here for uh, three winters. It's a good way to save money. I make, uh, you know, like $1,900 and then groceries is like maybe 400 a month. So I, I get to pocket like, like $1,500 every month. Though far removed from its origins as a silver mining town as recently as the 60s, Aspen was still a pretty resort inhabited by idealists who'd made the choice to retreat here in a breathtaking remote location away from it all. Today, however, the place has become utterly unaffordable. Over on the south side of the valley, Red Mountain neighborhood is populated with the biggest fortunes in the U.S. Born in 1933, Jane Click volunteers at the town museum, and today she represents Aspen's living memory. It's changed so much in the years that I've lived here, but you can never take away the beauty. It is the most beautiful place to live. It's a billionaire's paradise. Which the obscene real estate prices here can attest. On this part of town, they go anywhere from 20, I don't know if there's any for 10 million, but probably 20 million, 35 million. Up on Red Mountain, I think probably the least expensive is around 25 million. They sold one a few months ago or this summer for 72 million. Uh, last week I heard one went for 48 million. 
For some, it's a third, fourth or even fifth residence. At these prices, living in Aspen has become a challenge. And the people working for the wealthy, be it on the slopes, in their homes or in the hotels, can't keep up. Aspen is a microcosm of what's going on everywhere. The workforce, if you come in here, you cannot afford to buy a place. That's the problem. What is going to happen? What is going to happen when there is no one to service the huge homes that we have? The worker shortage has become an issue. The living situation is compounded by a recent phenomenon named the Great Resignation. For the past six months, following the first waves of the COVID pandemic, four million employees have been leaving their jobs every month in the US. Some of them do it in search of a different, better life, one that doesn't subject them to the stress inherent in the American definition of success. Those with less means have simply had enough of wearing themselves out for poverty wages. They know the market is tight and that they are in a position to ask for more and better. From their offices in Pitkin County, where Aspen is located, Patty Clapper and John Peacock observe this trend with concern and the same question on their minds. Where has the workforce gone? They found other ways, other resources, and um, a lot of it they were saving money by not having to commute long hours, they're having more family, more personal time, um, and they were able to get by, but there still now is the big issue of a wage equity. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we don't know how to solve that. We can't tell employers what to pay people, so it's become a competition out there. Um, we've got 20 job openings, we have 10 employees. I think it's a threat to Aspen's economy and beyond. And the rich are starting to realize they need the poor to maintain their way of life. I do think we are headed towards you know, a period where we really need to think about how we're distributing the, the benefits of, of society, how um, folks are, are able to you know, have a, a livable wage and, and be able to sustain in our community in order for our community to go on because we rely on the workers to provide the services and serve as a foundation for, for our community. Looking at what's happening in areas of Colorado now with, with workers, rest, or supermarket, grocery store workers going on strike, I think it is building to, a, the boiling point is increasing. And where that boiling point may overflow, is it just gonna be hot air, steam, or is it gonna be the bubbling up of a crisis? But everybody's getting tired and everybody's getting overwhelmed and frustrated. The county is managing the situation by adopting a series of measures that offer affordable housing. This caravan park was recently purchased to prevent it from being built over and to preserve the homes of those living there and working at the resort. County officials are obviously aware of the issues they're condemning, but they are just as aware that their fabulously wealthy constituents would never agree to social housing being built in the heart of Aspen. It's 4 p.m. Oscar, a snowboard instructor, is taking one last turn down the slope. Since he too loves working in the mountains, he has grown used to his wealthy, temperamental clients who show up in new $2,000 outfits every day. I love snowboarding, and here I can have a really good work-life balance because sometimes people don't show up for lessons, and sometimes you have rich clients that pay $1,000 for a one-day lesson, and they come for two hours of it. So it's, it's pretty mellow. Um, I know that my role here is to serve the wealthy, basically. And to save money, Oscar has come up with a unique way to have lunch. Every day at lunch, I don't buy lunch, and I find it, like if someone's about to throw away a tray, I'll roll up and say, oh, are you guys finished with that? I'll take that for you. And they're normally very happy to let me have it, and then I get a nice lunch out of it. And it's normally pretty high quality food, um, that's not what everybody does, but that helps me save definitely hundreds and hundreds of dollars a season. A 
At 6 p.m., about 20 miles outside of Aspen, David's job manning the ski lift is done for the day. He's making his way over to the grounds where tiny houses, a euphemism for trailers, have been set up. Five hundred bucks is probably a nice dinner in Aspen. I mean, and that's what my rent costs. It's it's honestly incredible, just um, the sheer wealth disparity. I mean, I, I read an article the other day that said the billionaires are kind of kicking the millionaires out of Aspen, that they're buying up their houses, which is just wild to me. There's three three people living here. I pay about a hundred bucks a month more um, because I can stand up in my room, which you cannot do up there. I vote for the Democrats, but the way that I've always described it is do you want the status quo or do you want regression? I don't really believe that this country um, makes progress. Um, the last two elections have really taught me that. Um, so I feel like um, it's, you know, are you trying to continue to repair the cracks in the dam or are you actively cracking the dam when the reality is that what we need to do is relieve the pressure in the first place? Not just a whim of privileged workers, the Great Resignation also signals a growing awareness in the working class. Whether in Denver supermarkets or serving Aspen's wealthy elite, some are standing up to the inequality and indecency. They know the country needs them, but Americans aren't used to revolution.